if you're praying and you're not getting any answers, <laughs> he's not the problem. But guilt and shame won't fix the problem either. John 16. This is where Jesus is letting his guys know that their sorrow, sadness of his departure will be met with overflowing joy. Jesus is going to give a secret here. Did you know that Jesus is referred to as the most joyful human being to ever live? It's in the book. It's in the book. It describes him as his joy that surpassed all of his brethren. And the language there. I haven't studied it for years, but as I remember looking over that, it basically said his joy was greater than everybody else's joy, joy put together. His joy was a greater, more full joy than everybody else around him combined. We just don't see that on the TV shows about him. Chosen does a little better with that joy thing. He's, he seems to be pretty happy. So, uh, well, I, lo I love it for that reason and more. But here he says, verse 23, in that day you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly I say, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be made full. Say that with me, that your joy may be made full. Let's make it personal. That my joy would be made full. Say it again. That my joy would be made full. So here's God writing a prescription. And he's saying, I'm giving you a blank check. As these blank checks are answered, you will discover dimensions of joy in, in me that you have only seen in the person of Jesus. Yeah. Now, I remind you, what was the only thing Jesus, uh, excuse me, what was the only thing the disciples asked Jesus to teach them? How to pray. How to pray. He didn't say, they didn't say, teach us how to multiply food. Would have been cool. Didn't, didn't say, teach us how to heal the sick. Didn't ask for any of those things. Said, teach them, teach them how to pray. Why? I believe there's a connection here. I believe there was something written in their heart that they could see. There's something about this time that Jesus goes up on the mountain. He spends time with the Father. His answers to prayer. He is demonstrating a dimension of joy we know nothing about. So when Jesus comes and gives them an unlimited set of blank checks, and he says, listen, this is how you get into that joy. He's inviting them into his own personal breakthrough that he lived on a daily basis. Joy beyond all human reasoning. And it was at least in part connected to his answers to prayer. Chris Gore told us years ago, uh, we just released him to head back to New Zealand. But he, he, uh, he told us years ago, he said, Jesus never taught on how to deal with unanswered prayers because he didn't have any. <laughs> That's worth remembering. Jesus prayed and made a difference. So here's the deal. If prayers are not being answered, it's not God's problem. Uh, let me rephrase it. It's not his fault. <clears throat> if there are no answers to prayer, it's not God's fault. If you're praying and you're not getting any answers, he's not the problem. But guilt and shame won't fix the problem either. I was designed for a seamless connection. That's my nature. I was designed to hear from God. It is in my DNA to produce fruit for the glory of God. Is it happening? If it's not happening at, at the place where I'm laying down my life, then I need to take Jesus aside. Yes. Yes. In other words, Lord, I know you're not the problem and I don't know what is, but I have said yes 
to a lifestyle that brings you glory through continuous answers to prayer. I desire to see the impossibilities of life bend their knee to the name Jesus through my lips. That is the longing of my heart. And the reason, as far as I can tell, my motive is clean. I want you glorified. It doesn't matter to me if anybody traces that back to my prayer. What I need is to see that I yielded, you spoke through me, a miracle took place. And now all of creation and all of humanity celebrates the goodness of a perfect father because of that answer to prayer. We owe the world around us answers to prayer. James talks about your prayers are not answers because you ask amiss. Amiss, who, who's, who's, who's amiss? Don't, don't ask her, whatever. <laughs> you ask with, with wrong motives. You, you ask outside of his purpose and plan. And I get that, and I'm thankful that he, 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 he shuts down those, uh, those prayers in a sense. But sometimes... Does this make sense? Sometimes you pray the wrong thing for the right reason. And sometimes you pray the right thing for the wrong reason. Don't stop. Keep pressing in until that prayer is purged and purified. Don't, don't stop. Don't stop. God, it's in your word. I don't know if I'm doing this right, but it matters to me to see what you've promised happen before me. And if it's not to happen through my hands, I'm fine with that. Just do it through somebody. But we've got to see this thing change. We've got to see this thing turn. God, I'm declaring your word into this situation. No, doing all I know to do. Pray and act. Take time. When you go to bed at night, God, teach me. Teach me even as I sleep how to pray more effectively. All I want is the name of Jesus to be exalted in the earth. That's all I want. I want the Father glorified because he thought of this redemptive plan to offer his son as a sacrifice to restore people to an eternal destiny of representing him on a planet until this planet is transformed. It was your plan. It's perfect. We celebrate it. Now, let it be implemented fully in and through my life for the glory of God. I ache for this. I ache for this dimension of prayer for me and for you. Not that my will can be done. Not for the building of my kingdom. But I was designed to fit seamlessly into a kingdom where God is forever glorified. That's what I was made for. And prayer is my part to see heaven come to earth. Amen. Amen. All right, go ahead and stand. Prayer is such a huge mystery to me. Sometimes the most simple, off-the-wall, extreme, outrageous prayer prayed only once, taking three seconds, is answered. I mean off-the-wall crazy stuff. And other things are labored for over great periods of time. And they just seem to meet with great resistance. And somebody had a dream of me that was sent to me this last week. And I, I won't go through the dream, but there's a prophetic picture that basically described the determined focus walk. And as long as I keep walking, the, the, the enemy that is trying to destroy has to run to keep up. I love that picture. And they become exhausted and we don't. We just keep plotting. I just love the picture. I'm just kidding. 
What are you going to do, Bill? I'm just not going to quit. That's all I know. I'm just going to. I'm just not going to quit. I'm going to keep going in the direction I said yes to. Yeah, but what about no? But what about? Don't distract me. I'm going to keep going. Why? The enemy gets exhausted trying to keep up with your walk. I believe it's a profound picture. So, Father, I pray. I, I pray again. I've prayed this uh, many times in the last couple of years. Take us in to this kind of a season in prayer where we truly see the unusual, not for entertainment's sake, but for the name of Jesus exalted in the earth, for the Father to be honored throughout all creation because your plan worked. I pray for that, that you take every person in this room and launch us into a significance of prayer unlike any other season. I wanna just real quickly ask, is there anyone here that does not have a personal relationship with Jesus, but you want to know what it is to be forgiven of God, part of a family. You want to know what it is, the Bible calls it being born again. You become different from the inside. It's a work of grace that he does in us as a gift. If you want that, you're hungry for that. If you're online, let a pastor know. If you're in one of the other rooms, let one of the pastors know. If you're in this room, wave, put a hand up in the air. I just want to see you right where you are, and I want to make agreement with you, because we're going to believe, God, that the miracle of a new creation for you starts today. Real quick. Is there anyone in that, in that position? All right. All right, we're going to assume you're all in. We're going to have a ministry team down here ready to pray for people. Are you coming up, Ruth? Come on up. Yeah, I'm so glad that you uh, watched this video. I do pray that it's a great, great strength and encouragement to you. And I've got a verse that really is my cry for all of us. And it's uh, Psalms 20, it's verse four. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. That's my prayer. That's my prayer is that this would be the season of rich, rich fulfillment. Thanks for joining us.